Sounds good, doesn't it? I debated whether or not to continue <clears throat> with the series on the fall of Babylon because of the, the schedule I've already printed up, but <clears throat> it's not that there's nothing else to talk about. But uh, this is something that's been simmering on the back burner for quite a while, so I thought I'd let it out tonight yeah. since the opportunity came up. <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, this is really the, the things that have occurred here today uh, speak to the grace of God and how He works among His people. I was thinking, you know, in places where I've attended before, I wondered what would happen if, if the man that was scheduled to preach suddenly got sick and couldn't come. I was probably at the the best in the best assemblies. Probably one of the elders would would stand in the pulpit, and he'd probably go through and and pick out one of his old sermons from a few years ago that he hadn't preached in a while, and he'd do it out of duty because he's an elder, and that's what elders do, right? That's probably the best situation. Now I I can imagine other places they just cancel a service and everyone stay home. But I think thank the Lord that uh, we. We just we just keep on going through today and this evening. Just we just move along like we have been. There's no no big hiccup in things here. That's the way the Lord works in Zion. <clears throat> Thankful for that. Now this text, <clears throat> my text this evening, which is Brother Judah read from Jeremiah chapter 51, might come as a surprise to you. <clears throat> The, uh, I've entitled this sermon, We Would Have Healed Babylon. Yeah. Now, considering what we know about Babylon and all that the prophets have said about Babylon, <clears throat> that she has been proud, she has destroyed God's heritage, she has spoiled and destroyed His temple, she has scattered His people, she has made the nations mad. That's like crazy, not angry. That means like she just made them crazy. Uh -huh. She was ruthless and cruel and oppressive. Her kings lifted themselves up to heaven. She mingled the things of God with the things of the world. She is the great whore and the mother of the abominations of the earth. She's drunken with the blood of the saints. She has become the habitation of devils and of every foul spirit. She is the antithesis of the church of God. And considering where she came from, which is the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, which is the devil. And considering that God began to announce her fall and judgment by the holy prophets of old, now this might be a surprising thing for you to hear. We would have healed Babylon. <clears throat> In fact, some of the commentators had a very hard time with this text, saying that, that this was actually speaking of Babylon's allies the nations that were allied with her, that when Cyrus and the Persians came to destroy the city, that this is what Babylon's allies said. We, like, we tried to help, but we just couldn't. So we're going to have to go back to our own countries now. But, well, you have to really stretch to get that out of this text. If you go back to verse 1, Jeremiah 51, verse 1 says, Thus saith the Lord. Not thus saith Babylon's allies. <clears throat> This is not a statement but her allies, but this is a statement made of God. Thus saith the Lord. It's made by the Lord on behalf of himself and behalf of his people. And now that's made obvious by the, the text here. We would have healed Babylon. Let us go, everyone, unto his own country. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, let us declare the work of the Lord our God. Now that doesn't sound like Babylon's allies talking. <clears throat> Amen. Now, something that we see here is the nature of the people of God. Who we've established here who we are. We in this text is, is us. It's the people of God. <clears throat> but this is the way the people of God are. Their desire is to do good to all. Yeah. They are merciful, long-suffering, yeah. patient, kind, and especially to other professed believers, which is what Babylon is. Yeah. It's a city of professed believers. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And what's the result? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. And now how do we treat our enemies? Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Again, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son, that is the sun in the sky, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Now, throughout history, God has always had some of his people in Babylon. If it not ancient Babylon, then spiritual Babylon. <clears throat> if for no other reason that so that he will be justified in his judgment of her. The presence of the people of God in Babylon brought out who she really is. <clears throat> we were not well received by her. When she found out that we could not be lured away by her earthly agenda, when she found out that we would not commit fornication with her and drink of her cup of abominations, then we were despised of her. When the people of God were in Babylon, not only did it reveal their true character, but it also reveals the nature of Babylon. She had a tremendous spiritual treasure available to her in God's people, which were living in her city. Think of the treasure that each of us carries with us, that God has given us. I'm talking about the treasure of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the remedy for sin, the message of righteousness by faith and the grace of God the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the new creation, the inheritance of the saints, and much more declared in the gospel. Everything that God has given to men has been within Babylon's borders, but she refused all of it. Amen. Babylon has no appetite for the things of God. It's not that there was no balm for her pain. The balm was available, and the people of God desired to apply the balm but she would not be healed. <clears throat> now this is lived out in the scriptural record of ancient Babylon. You know that all of Judah was taken captive to Babylon. This people that were taken captive were the sole possessors of whatever God had given to men at that time. They were brought up under Moses, a great deliverer and a leader and an intercessor and a prophet. They had Abraham, the father of the faithful, as their father, King David was part of their heritage. To them were given the holy prophets. This is the people from which the Lord Jesus came. And more specifically, who was living in Babylon in the height of her glory? How about Daniel? How do you ignore Daniel in Babylon? There was a man with access to God who was given understanding and wisdom to whom angels appeared. And visions from God were delivered. Three times Daniel was told of an angel, you are greatly beloved in heaven. Even if Daniel were the one and only Jew in Babylon, I'm going to show you that that would have been enough to heal her if she would have been healed. But he wasn't the only one. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were there, all in the king's presence and at his disposal. At Daniel's request, they were promoted to being over the affairs of the province of Babylon. So it's not like these men were living in secrecy somewhere in Babylon, hidden from the general population. No, they were in plain sight. The people of God were not only there, but they were prominent. In fact, these were rulers over Babylon. Now, reading Daniel's book, it appears, it appears like Nebuchadnezzar was almost healed. We're going to read what he said. <clears throat> At Daniel's, pardon me, he took the note, he took note of Daniel's God, <clears throat> and the record of it is very clear. When Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the great image, the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God, he is God, a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. In Daniel chapter 3, when Hananiah Azariah and Mishael were delivered and walked out of the fiery furnace without the smell of smoke on them. Nebuchadnezzar, same king, 
said this. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Again, Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar himself gives testimony of something that happened to him when he was lifted up with pride and how God humbled him. From Nebuchadnezzar's own decree, we read, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs! How mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Now that was not hidden. This was Nebuchadnezzar of worldwide fame to this very day. He made this decree. So this was no secret. How could the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar himself, make such decrees if God were not working there? <clears throat> was there no balm in Babylon? Was there no messenger of God? Was there no word from God sent there? Were there no mighty acts of God done in Babylon? Yes, there were. There were great things done there, but she would not be healed. Furthermore, the generations after Nebuchadnezzar rejected this knowledge and forgot God and his people. Just before Babylon fell in an hour, Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, was holding a great feast in which he thought it would be a good idea to drink out of the vessels from the temple that had been taken. <clears throat> but Daniel again is given prominence and reminds Belshazzar of what God did to his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and was, his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. So here in Babylon, dreams were interpreted, and Nebuchadnezzar gave God the glory and made proclamations concerning God to the world. Belshazzar knew all of this. He saw the handwriting on the wall, proclaiming the end of Babylon, God's prophets were there, his people were there, his word was there, he made his power and wisdom known in their midst. Yes. These were all opportunities to be healed. Amen. God had left the antidote well within reach of Babylon, but she would not be healed. Amen. Even after Nebuchadnezzar's great proclamations, acknowledging the God of Daniel, 
the God of heaven as the only God. After being humbled to eat grass like an animal and live in the fields for seven years and acknowledging that this too was of the great God of Daniel, yet Babylon would not be healed. Not only were these four men there, Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, but the holy prophet Ezekiel also lived in Babylon, as later did Joshua the priest and Zerubbabel, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah and other holy men at other times. Is anyone going to allege that not enough was done to help Babylon? Is anyone going to allege that more should have or could have been given to heal her? In the judgment, will anyone from Babylon rise up and say that they were not given the resources necessary to be healed? No. Why won't she be healed? <clears throat> Why won't Babylon be healed? Because it belongs to Satan. Babylon is his city. It's his church. <clears throat> he motivates the people and leads them wherever he desires. Satan could look God square in the face and not repent of his sins. Amen. And his people are the same way. They are not healed because they have no real desire for God. No desire for real and personal righteousness. No desire for true holiness. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. In other words, they're phonies, they're fakes, they're pretenders, they're hypocrites. How can we say that they have no real desire for God? Because God put his people in the midst of spiritual Babylon throughout the ages to prove what kind of people dwell there. The fact of the matter is that the truth has been proclaimed in Babylon loudly and clearly. Babylon cannot say, we have not heard, yeah. and we did not know. And I'm not saying that the people of Babylon have been pummeled with rebukes that they would not receive, although that might be true also. I'm not saying that we have given a brief and half-hearted effort or that we feigned to heal her. Some of us here can testify that with great love and care for her people, we preached and taught and prayed for them with tears and supplications to God. We labored in the word with our hearts to apply the balm to her wounds that were brought on by her own sins. Like the good Samaritan, we had compassion on her. We desired to pour in the oil and wine, and that at our own expense. Like our Lord, we showed mercy to her and hoped for her healing, but she would not be healed. The great whore cannot be healed. It took a long time for some of us to come to this realization, <clears throat> too long. Sometimes we blamed ourselves for lack of reception of the word in Babylon. Or maybe I was too harsh. Maybe I didn't say it right. Maybe I went about it the wrong way and I should have explained it a different way. Maybe I need to try a different approach. Maybe I need to back up and explain a few other things first. Personally, when it dawned on me who I was dealing with, I was ashamed that I stayed in Babylon for so long, actually thinking that I could have helped. <clears throat> Babylon cannot be helped. There are a handful of preachers that we know. I won't say any names, but if I were, you would all know them. <clears throat> These are men that have not seen this truth yet, that Babylon cannot be healed. They are wasting their time, and whatever God has given them is being wasted. They will not have success. They will not be fruitful. This has already been declared in the word of God. We don't have to guess about the outcome of this. She is not going to be healed. She is going to fall. Her judgment will come swiftly and her plagues will be many. Now it might comfort you to know that Jesus himself made every good and holy effort to heal a people that would not be healed. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and those that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Now Jesus didn't hang around and perform community service where his word was not received. 
Jesus could say, I revealed the Father to you. I brought grace and truth. I came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I came into the world to save sinners. I spoke the words of life and I gave life. I am the good shepherd. I set myself to do good unto you. Remember the day that he stood in the temple and took up the book and read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the receiving of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, to some extent, many of us have said that same thing in the churches that we have been in. <clears throat> Jesus said, I would have gathered you unto myself as a hen gathers her brood for protection, for learning, for life but you would not. You would not be healed. <clears throat> there are some people that even Jesus cannot heal. <clears throat> Whereunto shall I liken this generation? It's like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows, saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done. Because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works that were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. Amen. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the judgment than for you. Some of the most wicked cities in the history of the human race will receive a more tolerable judgment than Babylon will. She has been given much. In the great judgment, there will be confessions and testimonies given of what was made available within the very walls of Babylon. Such a great deal of revelation has been given to us, and with technology, this is available all over the world. <clears throat> and yet, at the same time, sin and rebellion in the churches is at an all-time high. In the judgment, the people of God will stand and give an account of their attempts to heal her, and the people of Babylon will confess what was offered to her by the people of God, and they will have to say in the end, but she would not be healed. <clears throat> when it comes to Babylon, the people of God have only two choices given us in Scripture. You can either come out of her, or you will be a partaker of her sins and of her plagues. <clears throat> and I insist those are the only two choices. Yes. Healing Babylon, helping Babylon, converting Babylon, saving other believers that might be in Babylon, none of these are options that are on the table. You come out, or you partake of her sins and her plagues. <clears throat> If there are other believers in Babylon, we trust the Lord that he will bring them out. Right. And if they are believers indeed, then they will indeed come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, none of us were given the ministry of going into the whorehouse to look for other believers. <clears throat> Hear the clear word of the Lord to his people. Jeremiah 51, 9 in our text, forsake her, mm -hmm. forsake her, right. and let us go unto our own country. She would not be healed before the judgment came, and she will not be healed after the judgment. Forsake her. Babylon could have avoided destruction if she were healed, but her judgment is very plainly declared in Revelation 17 and 18. It ought to be obvious to the people of God that coming out of her and forsaking her is the only valid thing to do, and that quickly. There are two reasons forsaking her for forsaking her, <clears throat> given in our text here. One reason for leaving Babylon 
is because simply because she will not be healed. <clears throat> the priority of the people of God is to engage in what God is doing. When it is seen that Babylon will not be healed and that she is going to fall, the only right response is to forsake her. We have all tried to heal Babylon too, haven't we? It was not wrong for us to try. God put us in those places and let us have a go at it, so to speak, so that he could teach us the truth of this text. I can still remember when it dawned on me that for 15 years I had labored in one church in particular and had not produced any observable good fruit. Babylon will not be healed. She does not want to be healed. She cannot be healed. <clears throat> The people of God were there in Babylon with the balm for her sins. Not only did we have the goods, but we had the desire. We were willing to heal her. We came equipped to heal her. We had the answers. We had the remedy. Daniel and Ezekiel were in Babylon. Martin Luther was in the Catholic Church. We could go throughout all of history and show how that God has done this. He has planted his people so that they would be heard in Babylon. We were there in Commerce, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. We were there to help at West Side. Yeah. We were there at Jensen Beach and DeSoto and Garner Church of Christ and the Milford Church of Christ. We were there at Ozark Christian College. Mm -hmm. We were there at Claremont Christian Church and First Christian Church in Crown Point. Uh -huh. And we were there in many other places. We were there with the balm for her pain, which is the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ. We wanted to heal her, and we tried to heal her, but she would not be healed. Those who are still trying to heal her at this present time had better learn this very quickly, or they'll find themselves partaking of her plagues. Amen. The first reason to forsake her is because she would not be healed. The second reason to forsake her is because God is working elsewhere. <clears throat> the Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come. Let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. When we think about others that we know that are still living in spiritual Babylon, this is the way you have to look at it. <clears throat> Those who will not come out of Babylon will not come out because they are at home there. If I enjoyed my stay in Babylon, I would still be there, but I didn't. I was miserable there. Babylon was not my own country. When professed believers refuse to come out of Babylon, they reveal their lack of <clears throat> preference for Zion. When it dawned on me that my labors had not produced any good fruit, the next obvious deduction was, of course, God is not working here. <clears throat> Jesus produces fruitful branches that glorify God, and I didn't see any of that in Babylon. And if God was not there, I didn't want to be there. He has brought forth our righteousness. That is now especially for ancient Judah. The time of our captivity is over. God's determined judgment has been accomplished and now we can get out of here. Amen. His wrath has been satisfied. He hath brought forth our righteousness, the righteous way of escape from captivity. He has begun a good work in Zion in which we all can participate. Are we going to stay in the land of our captivity and continue to labor for nothing? Are we going to continue to attempt to heal a harlot that will not be healed? No. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. In Zion, they will hear. In Zion, God is working. In Zion, there is no sorrow in preaching the gospel. In Zion, there is an abundance of good fruit produced by the word of God. In Zion, the word of God is received with joy. In Zion, there is the love of the brethren. In Zion, there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Zion has no need of healing. Yeah. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Psalm 50, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. And Psalm 102, thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. 
So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.